everybody. Here's another edition of our uh, coaching drill series, trying to partner these with the webinars that we've done and the film breakdown that we've done. And so you can see all the pieces kind of coming together, how we take lessons from film or things that we're trying to work on on film and how we address them through some of the drills that we're doing. One of the things that I'm constantly being asked is, you know, how do you work on communication? And I, I firmly believe it's like any other skill. You have to practice it. You have to practice being loud. You have to practice being clear. You have to practice a uh, freshman telling a senior what to do or, you know, using the terminology that is uh, inherent to your program. So uh, the Simon Says Drill, something I, I developed in my previous job as a way for us to, to practice all of those components as a, as a variable within all the drills that we're doing. So in some of the earlier drills that we've shown you, whether it's asterisk or some of the other ones, um, movement is the real focus. In this one, it's movement and language together. So in a previous drill, we might have focused just on the movement piece. Here, we're focusing on language and movement together. So you can do this drill with two people, you can do it with three people, you can do it with four people, depending on how much space that you have and how many reps you want guys to get in certain roles. But in this one that we're setting up, you can see we have other groups all over the half field where we're working. And we're gonna focus on the group that's right in front of the goal. But all of these guys have to do a couple of things. They have to imagine that they have a goal and that they also have to imagine that there's offensive players in this drill. Because there's only three people in this iteration, there's only three people in the group. So. Here are the people, D1 and D2, the lower defensemen. They're your Simon Says guys. They're the guys who are going to be saying instruction to DX. They're going to be telling him. They're going to describe a situation. They're going to use the language that you may use in your uh, off-ball defense, in your sliding defense. And then they're also going to be in an athletic stance relative to imaginary players that they'll have responsibility for. And you don't see them because they're not in the drill. So D1 and D2 are going to take turns telling DX what to do. And what I tell guys when I watch film of us doing our drills, I want to be able to watch this group going and not have to assume, but straight know what D1 is telling DX to do or what D2 is telling DX to be aware of. Because you'll be able to discern it through his movement and how his body reacts. So... You might have D1 tell a guy to go to a slide. You might tell him to recover in front of the crease. You might send him to the back side. But, and one of the ways that you'll start this drill is, hey, we're going to pretend like the ball is here. And so everyone will know how to orient themselves relative to the ball. So he might give him three instructions, and then you rotate this DX off. You know, DX would leave. Maybe he moves here, and D1 becomes this guy. And now he now the original Simon Says guy moves off, and now he's the guy giving instructions to his teammates. So all three guys will rotate through being both an instructor and a recipient of language and instruction. So in you know if this rep goes on for 45 seconds, each guy will play stay in each role. Oh, 60 seconds, each guy will get will be in the instructor's role at least one time and in the recipient role at least one time. So it's a great drill. The teaching points are practicing language, off-ball movement and orientation, uh, taking instruction, and, and practicing the essential terms that are part of your off-ball defense.